Hello guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa, if you're just joining me here. For today's video, it's gonna be a long one, you guys. Grab a snack, sit back, relax, do some plant chores, because I'm about to give you an update on my plant. I'm gonna take you around my plant room here and a few other areas that I have plants, and we're gonna do an update on everyone. I felt like I haven't done a thorough update in a while. I just want to show you guys how my plants are doing, if there's good things going on, bad things. I do have to water some plants and my moss poles are dry, but that's okay. We're going to look past it. I will do some watering a little bit later, but I'm excited to at least, you know, update you on everyone. I did just recently do an update on some of my newer plants that I've gotten, so I will link that video up here for you somewhere. But this is going to be an update on the rest of my plants in my collection. I have so much repotting and stuff to do with my plants. So I'm excited to get more of that done here in the coming month or so. And I'm excited to do like a full houseplant tour once all of like my repotting and stuff is done. And I like have my plants in a good place. So I'll probably do one maybe towards like the summer sometime. It's getting uh, ready to storm. I feel like it's a little gloomy. It was sunny this morning, but the weather is like clouded over. So hopefully we can get through the outside plants and stuff before it starts raining. Maybe I should start there, but it'll be okay. I'm trying to decide where I should start. I always love starting with my moss poles because I feel like they're mo the most impressive. I don't have as many moss poles here right now, you know, because I did rearrange and I move plants out so it feels so much better in here not having so many poles. My Monstera dubia I just showed but this is a new leaf that I don't think had unfurled in that video and it's already working on another one. This plant is growing so quickly and I feel like the leaves are sizing up pretty fast too so I'm super excited to see how that one does this summer. I just think the leaf like the way that it feels is so cool how it just flattens out like that. I seriously am going to love that plant this summer. My Epi Alvo is growing very well and giving me like pretty huge fenestrated leaves. I mean, they're not like super big, but they're like a really good size. My Milano right beside it is doing well. This is the newest leaf and that was the leaf before. And I do need to secure that top vine to the pole. Cause you know, it had this weird fungal thing issue going on. So the leaves after it have been totally fine and happy. So I am very happy about that. This is my second Mikan's pole. My other one that's more full is outside cause I'm gonna be chopping it. But this one is getting like pretty large leaves already. It is beyond the pole. I do have to extend this one. But before I extend it, I might be tempted to combine the two poles into one or just make two Mikan's poles. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do, but this one is on wire and my other one is on plastic. This one started from that one because I took some bottom big leaves. I have an old video on my channel where I did this and this is all the growth that I've gotten since then. I just haven't decided what I wanna do. I don't really want two Mikan's poles, but I think trying to add that one onto this one might be a bit of a problem, but we'll see. I will be doing this soon and I will let you guys know. I'll, I'll definitely be filming it. Sabu Blue getting big, huge leaves. So impressive. It hasn't started fenestrating yet. So I'm waiting. I'm watching each new leaf that comes out, hoping that I get fenestration soon. Splendid is getting and sizing up so well. Look at that and it's already pushing a new leaf. So pretty, I love the velvety leaves. You can see how tiny it was when it first started compared to how it's growing now. So probably once it reaches the top, I think I might get rid of like this tiny section because I don't like how small this is compared to how big the top is getting. So I'll probably do like a chop like in between here somewhere when it's time. My Monstera Adansonia, you guys saw when I chopped it the second time. These are the newer leaves that it gave me. It didn't stress at all this time, which I'm honestly so surprised by. It's done well, and the first time it shocked, so 
very happy that it didn't shock and it is growing. That one has been through two chops. My varicosum there in the middle is finally growing for me after all this time. I have a couple new like growth points there. I have two vines in here growing. It's done well out of the cabinet. I will have to extend it probably here soon again because I feel like this one is growing pretty quickly out of the cabinet. So very happy with that. I love that plant and I'm so happy it's finally growing for me. And of course, my most loved Marble Queen. This new leaf is still hardening. This is the leaf before. This one was almost 11 inches. So this one I imagine once it finishes growing will probably be a foot in length, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> I love this plant so much. It would be so amazing to get fenestrations on her. I cannot wait. It's growing pretty fast too. So a new leaf is definitely going to um, sprout out of there very quickly. My Glorious and Escaletto are doing well. These are two extensions that I'm gonna have to do soon. The Glorious new leaf is here and it has a couple of new ones in the middle. And my Escaletto, this new leaf is huge, you guys. It's so big. Ginormous and it's already working on another one. That one is on the larger grow pole. These new leaves come in so ugly. <laughs> they come in looking almost, um, what's the word? They just come in looking so weird, like really sad. And then once they harden, they grow beautifully and fill in so nicely. Well, the next time that I have this new leaf, once it starts to unfurl, I'll have to take a picture of it and show you guys because it almost looks like something's wrong with it until it hardens. I don't know, it's the weirdest thing. Don't really have too many updates down below. I have mostly Hoyas. I do have to repot a lot of my Hoyas yet. I have my second Pilea down there. That's a baby that I took off of my normal one. It's so cute. This lemon lime is doing well. This one had flat mites. I need to kind of recheck it again, but I put it back in my plant room just to Put it in here and I didn't want it to get too sad out of my plant room but some of my other Marantas aren't doing well and I will show you that they're not in my plant room. My silver band down here had flat mites and it's slowly it seems happy but then I keep getting yellowing. It's doing better but again it's not it's not growing like it was. I have my big beautiful alocasias here, my fry deck and my regal shields. My Friday, I actually just found spider mites on a couple of the bottom leaves, so I'm gonna be treating this one with Azamax. If I don't get to it today, I will be treating it tomorrow. I had that phyllo spider mite outbreak, and these two were um, touching some phyllos, and um, some had gotten on my regal shield, but I didn't see any on my regal shield. I just have some on um, the couple of the bottom leaves back there, so I'm gonna have to treat this one. And this one's giving me two growth points, which is so interesting here in the middle. I love these big, gorgeous, velvety leaves. Just seriously, they're so amazing. Look at how beautiful that is. I'm obsessed. That is the section here all done. I'm gonna start here by the window and give you guys some updates. I feel like my Monsteras, I don't really have too many updates with them. They, a lot of them are waking up and giving me new growth. I have a new growth coming in on this Thai constellation. This one hasn't, I don't think this one's ready yet. Lots of new growth on my Monstera albos, lots of new leaves. And this one, I had an all white leaf here but the next leaf is pretty green, which I'm happy about. I was worried that I might have to chop this one. My Aria, I don't think that one's going to be pushing a new leaf anytime soon. The newest leaf is more fenestrated, but it's not as variegated. So hopefully the variegation is still pretty prominent on it. I moved it over here on the left side. I did have my fry deck here, but it was just growing so tall that the hanging baskets were getting in the way. So eventually I'm gonna probably have to slide those over so that the aria can still get all the good light in front as it grows. But we'll see, I'm excited to see how the next leaf is gonna be on that one. My pilea here is still doing well. I'm trying to remember to keep rotating it 
around. It has so many like pups and babies in there. This one's kind of growing off the side. I love my pilea. It's very happy here. It gets a pretty good amount of light. So I'm not messing with it. I'm gonna try and keep it in that spot for as long as possible. The variegated alocasia are in my window here. That one's down to one leaf and that one lost its only leaf, but there are growth points. Like you can tell it's going to pop a new leaf soon. So I think these ones just got unhappy because I moved them over here with the rest of them. So I just think they needed more light. So hopefully once the plant grows a bit more and gets this good light here in the window, they'll kind of stabilize. I don't know. I wish I didn't move them because I had them under the Barina light here and I had the other one on this shelf. So I think moving them over here was a bad idea. And I still want to give my fried egg more light. I have two mother lights here and you know, they're shining on my poles, but I sort of want to move this one like maybe closer this away. I actually might, um, I don't know. I feel like I want a taller plant stand so that I can reach, you know, up a little bit higher. I like these ones, but they're a little bit low. Like again, I kind of want this one up a little bit higher. So I might look into getting taller um, plant stands for these. As far as like my Hoyas and hanging baskets, I don't really have like too many updates on these. They're doing well. The, um, my variegated hearts, I'm gonna be repotting. I keep saying that. It's just like been on my to-do list. My regular string of hearts is finally growing back. And my variegated pearls, you guys, has really grown and taken off so much. Even my regular pearls, it's gotten so long. My Ahoya latifolia, I believe, is what they reclassified it as. I moved it over here in the window. And I have some new leaves up top coming in. And then my polyner really needs a repot. This one is like one of my favorite Hoyas. I just love the leaf shape. I'd love to have the variegated one too. But yeah, a lot of my Hoyas need an upsize. And I have the Shepardii here in the window and my Sunrise. Again, these need repotted too. And I haven't noticed any more ants, you know, since I moved the blooming Hoyas away. This one blooms as well as the Lacunosa here blooms constantly. You can see some blooms there. But for some reason, the ants aren't attracted to those blooms, which is fine by me. <laughs> the Bilobata and the Rutusa I took out of my plant room, those ones were blooming. And I'll show you where I moved those to. And the bottom two rows, my alocasias are all doing well. And, you know, I did repot some recently. The only one left to repot over here is the silver drag or the dragon scale right there. I do need to upsize that one. And I'm just waiting on new growth to kind of happen for the rest of them. My, these three I repotted together are giving me lots of new growth. My Makoyana is growing, growing in so well along with my Trio Star and my Rattlesnake Clethia. I feel like I'm getting so much new growth. My Gloriosum, I feel like tends to get stuck leaves a lot. That's like a new leaf that's been stuck for a while. I might try and put a paper towel or something on that. But since the repot, I feel like it's doing well in here. The leaves are kind of growing towards the Barina light here off to the side. So I feel like it's growing that away instead of like forward. So I might end up taking some of that plastic wire and like rerouting some of the leaves forward, but we'll see. I kind of want to find a new spot for this one so it can get some forward light, but it's doing well since I put it in here and yeah, that leaf I have to get unstuck. So over here, let's see, I think the most recent plant that I did was the Syngonium Alba that you guys saw and it's doing really well. I feel like this one is stretching towards the light over that way. I do have some new leaves coming in, like here's a new growth point. And I only lost one leaf. This one here is yellowing a bit on the bottom, but overall I feel like it, honestly it didn't really shock. I don't notice like any roots really too much growing 
into the moss yet, but it obviously it must be rooted in there because, you know, the plant hasn't really declined at all. From where I cut, I don't really see like growth points happening like there or there. This new leaf is going to unfurl here. So in some time it'll start growing again, but the top cuts are definitely still, you know, still growing. But I think it looks so much prettier on this pole. I love how like fluffy this looks. Hopefully it'll continue like growing fluffy all the way up because I think it'd be so pretty. This red maranta is my other Maranta that's in here since you know having flat mites. It still has some like sulfur on it that I'll have to wash off again. I do need to rescan that one, but it seems happy and it's pushing new growth. So I'm hoping the flat mites are gone. I still might do another treatment with it, but we'll see. Uh, for now, I'm just kind of leaving it here. It is kind of isolated. It's not really touching other plants, so I'm not worried about them spreading really if you know, it does still have flat mites, so we'll see. That uh, crystallinum is in uh, need for a major repot. I'm getting a little bit of yellowing on it just from like underwatering stress and all that, but it is definitely, my anthuriums are so overdue. Like this one here needs a repot too. So many of them need repotted. I definitely need to spend a day doing anthurium repots. I'm not gonna go too much into my syndapsis cause you, you guys know I'll be doing a third, like final video on them when all the props are rooted enough and then I will be repotting pretty much all of these. I do have, I will show you, I do have new growth coming in from where I had chopped and all the props are doing well. So I'm really excited to show you guys like an update on those for that video. I have all the props down here. You can see in that little um, bin under that light and they're doing amazing. I do have like a winner of like what substrate did the best and you know, I'll, I'll tell you for that video, but I only, I'll, I will say I only had one leaf die and all the other cuttings are doing amazing. So I will, um, hopefully I'll be able to do that video um, sometime in April, because I feel like I should be getting enough roots soon, hopefully that I can do like that repotting video. This Florida Beauty I'm gonna be putting on a thickly pole. Look at that half moon leaf. This is the one that I imported last summer from Root Greenhouse. It was doing every other leaf variegation, but it did two variegated leaves in a row, which I'm excited about. That color is amazing. So I'm really excited to see the new leaf. I, I do need to get it supported soon, so I'll be repotting that one. And my variegated burl marks is getting so big, you guys. Like, look at it. I did a poll on my Instagram and I was trying to decide if I should let it grow or chop it. I'm thinking about chopping it here because I don't like the stretched out growth. So I'm thinking about chopping like here and here, and then just like cutting this up and propping it. Cause I think it just looks too tall, but we'll see. I haven't made my mind up. It was like, I would say it was like 60% said to let it grow and like 40% said to chop it, but we'll see. You guys will have to let me know if I should chop it or leave it. I'm, I'm leaning towards chopping it though. And this shelf over here, that's the anthurium dresser leaf that I imported. It was in my cabinet, but I moved it out. It grew that big leaf recently and it has an inflow. I cut two of the other like older leaves off because they were like yellowing and getting crispy. The azalani is right here. And oh, let me bring it down. You can see that I cut the two remaining leaves off. So I'm basically just waiting to see if this is gonna grow back and do anything or if that fungal infection is gone. But I'm just keeping the stump, you know, just to see what happens with it. My Hoya Linearis, I need to desperately repot too. I love the little like growing ears that it's doing. <laughs> this one I just moved here, it was in my other bedroom. And I did like add some cuttings in, in an older video up top, but it was getting low light, so it wasn't really growing and a lot of that growth had died. So I have it under here under better light so I can get it filling out more because I do really love the neon 
like philodendron, so we'll see. I hope um, I hope I can get it to grow full. I felt bad that I kind of moved it and it got low light for a while. So hopefully it'll be growing back here. You guys might know like my string of turtles, my giant big full basket of string of turtles right here. I had to completely prop the entire thing because of ants that were coming in my window. So this is the only strand that was left that had roots that I potted up separately. And the rest of my turtles is here on the shelf. I have to reroot this entire thing of turtles because of the ants making a colony in that basket. So once they root, I will pot them back up. I mean, I was able to save a lot of strands, um, not nearly as many, you know, as I would have liked. And the rest of the props are actually in that little um, container down there. I'm so mad that I had to prop my turtles because it was so full and beautiful, but it'll be okay. I'll get it potted up and growing back in some time here. And my Brazil, you know, I took off the wall and it's there on the edge. I have it like kind of wrapped back up because it was hitting the floor. So I do like it a lot better like off the wall. Let's do my cabinet next. So the biggest change of my cabinet is I had to treat everyone for spider mites because of this maybe I. So you guys know I repotted this with my Gloriosum. And I guess it had maybe a couple spider mites on it and I didn't know and I didn't catch it in time. And I was watering in there probably like a week ago it's been now. And you see all that spider mite damage. So I kind of have it isolated over here. I mean, it was like a pretty nasty spider mite infection. So yeah, unfortunately a lot of the growth, which is really sad because I was looking forward to growing this plant back. Like every leaf has severe spider mite damage. So it looks like I'll have to be pretty much starting over with that plant again, which makes me so sad. So the fans in here were blowing spider mites everywhere. I had spider mites all over my alocasia. I had them on that alocasia. I had them on the philodendron. I even had them all the way up here on my manjula. It was just the weirdest thing. But I did spray my entire cabinet and for the most part, I think they're gone. I'm gonna have to do, I did a check and I didn't really see any, but I might have to do like another thorough check. My beautiful big anthurium hybrid here is doing well. I do need to repot it. It is severely like getting root bound and I've stressed it, I think by underwatering a bit. I had that inflow that I pollinated, but it didn't make it. The inflow just died. So I had to cut it off. So unfortunately I don't have like any anthurium berries, which is really sad. I did try to pollinate this inflow. So I don't know if this one, you know, took or not, but we'll see. I think I did this one with, um, now I don't remember. See, I did it again. I pollinated it, but I don't remember what I pollinated it with. Do you guys see how dark it is? It almost looks like it's, you know, nighttime. It is only 3.30 in the afternoon. It is fixing to pour. Oh my goodness. Whoa. That weather was just so crazy, you guys. It just got so dark. I was letting my camera cool down because it was overheating. And I just like got on my Instagram for like 10 minutes and I look back in here and it's like pitch black out. I'm like, what is going on? I had to go rescue the cats from outside. They were just chilling out there, like not, not a care in the world. I'm like, okay, kitties, let's, let's go back in for a little bit. So we are gonna finish up here and hopefully by the time I show you guys the plants out there, it will have passed and no more rain, but we'll see, it's still looking kind of dark. All right, so I think we left off with the anthurium. So yeah, I'm just, I don't know why I've been lazy with not marking my anthuriums, but this one I know for sure, I um, use the podata radiatums. I don't know if it took or not, we will see. 
But as far as everything else in the cabinet, everything seems to be doing well, you know, minus that spider mite situation that happened. And I accidentally broke the new leaf off of this pink princess here. It just snapped accidentally. So that one's gonna take a while to start growing. And the Burl Marks Fantasy is doing well on a pole. I do have an older video where I did put that one, you know, on there and it seems to be doing really well. I need to repot, like I said, all my anthurium. The variegated Adansonii is doing okay. And the manjula I put in here is giving me some new leaves. That's going to be really exciting to see that once it actually starts sizing up. The majestic that I had to cut, this, uh, this growth here is giving me, I think there's a growth point here, but I think this is, I think this one is the mid cut and this one is the top cut that's growing, but the leaf kind of yellowed on that. And then the bottom cut is down here. And I do have a growth point on the bottom one back there. Chai says hi. I actually think I might plant this Regal Shields outside this baby one. I was gonna pot it in with my pot, my big one, but I think I might um, do this one outside. Okay, I changed the brightness down just for a bit so that I could show you guys the rest of this in here. So as I was saying, I have a couple silver sword in here and some Friday that I might do outside. That's the rest of my Milano that I potted up. My Oblica nodes. I have some more Friday, I believe. And these are some corms that I took off of my Capria and my other alocasias that I just filmed. Come on, Chichai. Come on, buddies. You are in a lovey-dovey mood. I think those are silver dragon. And then all of my alocasia props here are growing in. That's the first new leaf. And I have another one and another one here that's growing in. The Azelani hasn't quite, you know, given me a leaf yet, but we're getting there. And I can tell I need to water that fluval. It is getting a little bit dry. I'm trying to think what I want to update you on over here. I repotted my El Choco in a video, and this is a new leaf that's coming in since the repot. And my silver stripe is here on a pole. It's giving me some, a little bit of like bigger leaves. My um, Jacqueline, it looks to be wanting to push maybe another leaf here, right down there. And the Painted Ladies that I potted up, I have this one that's doing well, but this other one isn't doing as well. I have some that have some sad leaves. So it is interesting how one vine is like stressing and one isn't. Oh shoot. Oh, there it goes. I just spilled some something. Chai will not stop rubbing me down here. He's driving me crazy. But this one gave me a couple uh, new leaves. The Raphidophora tetrasperma that I'm going to have to stake soon. My Forgetty Eye, I'm going to have to repot. Birkin is doing well. Oh, here's my Oblica. It's growing back more. You can see the new leaves that have come in on it. So, so pretty. I got my variegated heart leaf growing. And the Sorderoi, the newest leaf, is a little bit bigger, you can see here. I think this one was still unfurling when I showed it last. And my Florida ghost here is giving me some new leaves. I did end up chopping a lot of plants that I didn't really show you guys. So I chopped my Syngonium mojito and it is rooting in water here. I actually chopped quite a bit of Syngonium. That's a Syngonium aria that I kind of chopped back. And that pink princess broke the bottom part of it, just kind of rotted out for some reason. I don't know why. So I'm like rerooting it in fluval. It's the one that I had on the shelf the whole time. So I don't know if I accidentally let it, you know, get too wet, but it is rooting back or like overwatered it for some reason. I don't, I don't really know what happened with that. I was very confused by that. And these props I took in that video, that plant chores video, and look at all the roots, you guys. It is rooting in here like crazy. 
This is the variegated Adansonii, the Indonesian form. So yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with all the props, but I have lots of roots. I chopped my Monstera Peru. I have some more cuttings that I have in the other room. And this silver sword um, is rooting and fluval. I think I have a growth point in here, yeah. And then I have lots of fluval stratum roots that you can see. Look at all that. So this one I'll probably be potting up soon. Again, this silver sword had some like weird yellowing, so I ended up cutting the entire plant back. I did that in a Patreon video. I showed you guys this. It put out another leaf right here. So the, the first leaf is kind of browning. It's like withering away. And then this is the second leaf, and then it has another growth point. And then here's another node that's growing. I ended up cutting my jewel orchid and I put it in this terrarium and it's doing well. I just chopped it all up. Yeah, I think I see some fuzzy roots in there and I have like new growth. You can see. I did this in a reel on Instagram. I just didn't like the way that mine was growing. So I decided to just chop it all up and root it and have it live in this terrarium in sphagnum moss. And it's doing well. It's definitely liking it. I open it every once in a while, but I don't really like air it out too much or anything. So, I mean, it seems to do well. These three plants, my pink princess, I'm gonna have to do an extension on this soon. It has a new leaf coming in. The global green I chopped in a video. I had another plant here in the front and it ended up like rotting. So I only have the one vine now that's growing, but it seems to have stabilized. The newest leaf is a little bit smaller after the chop, but hopefully as it continues to climb, it will, you know, keep getting bigger. I have the halo micans here that is growing. I don't know what happened to that new growth. And then my Monstera Stanleyana Albo is growing really tall. I have like one main vine here that's, it's like seriously so fluffy. I feel like I need to do a photo or something with that. That actually started from one cutting, believe it or not, and it has grown so much. This little section is the last little corner in this room. So my Baltic Blue I did for a Patreon video. I put it on a thickly pole and it's going to climb up here. My Jessiana pothos is actually starting to size up on the moss pole. I feel like I need to like attach that one a little bit better. When I water my poles, I will fix some of these plants. This is the variegated Adansonii that I showed you the cuttings of. It's starting to grow back from where I chopped it. And my Amedrium medium silver is, looks like it's giving me a long runner because I accidentally let the pole go too dry. So it's deciding to just give me a runner. So I'll probably be chopping that. And my serpent is doing okay. This leaf looks a little unhappy, but I do have a new leaf coming in here. I think it was from when I had it in the window and I was letting it get too dry. I don't think it's anything fungal related, you know, cause that, that other original leaf had the fungal infection. So let's see, I'm keeping, oh my gosh, this has spider mites. I didn't even think about checking this phyllo for spider mites. Looks like I'll be training this one and my fry deck later for spider mites. I should have checked this one. I don't know why I didn't check. I'm just gonna sit him in my bathroom so that I can spray him down. I am so mad that serpents has spider mites. Ugh, I forgot to check it when I had that philodendron spider mite outbreak. I'm sure I checked it and it probably didn't have any and then it just randomly, I don't know, spider mites are just attracted to my phyllos. I will not get spider mites hardly on any other plant genus other than phyllos. I don't know what it is. And I love phyllos, but honestly, the spider mites and the phyllos are making me not like phyllos anymore. I mean, I love them, but they're definitely not my favorite genus just because I'm so sick of the spider mites I get with them. So that was pretty much everything here in my plant room. I'm gonna take you to the dining area and a few other places and I'll show you outside the plants. I don't know if I have like too many updates on the plants that I put outside, but I will show you those. 
and then we will finish up this video. <laughs> Chai is down here. He just is going ham. He is going crazy. He's like nonstop. It's like I'm trying to walk and he's just like rubbing my legs the entire time. <laughs> Here's a sneak peek at some of the plants that we planted outside. Some variegated ginger, cordyline. We planted some agave. And I don't know if the caladiums are gonna tolerate the sun, but they're like my test project. And we planted some palms. <laughs> so I was a little naughty and didn't acclimate these to sun. So those are getting a little angry and burnt at me as well as that planter I just did. The cacti are fine, they've already been acclimated. And this one accidentally has some burn on it cause I didn't really, I forgot to move it coming out here every day. Cause these are the pretty, mu pretty much all the ones that get full sun. So that is my bad. I knew they were gonna burn. This ficus has pretty much dropped all the leaves there. Oh my gosh, did you see that lightning? Yeah, it didn't like being brought inside and then outside and then back inside again. So we'll see. I hope it grows back because I, I knew that one was going to stress. And the other ficus is doing well. It doesn't get hardly any sun out here. So it seems to be liking it. I haven't really noticed any like new growth yet, but it hasn't really... I have like a couple brown spots that have popped up, which, you know, will happen, but it hasn't dropped any leaves and hopefully it'll like grow really well out here. It is so dark now because of the weather. And what do we have over here? I'm trying to think, I don't really have too much to update you on. I don't think over here. I haven't noticed like too much growth on the Hoyas. My Crimson Princess is still kind of stunted since having flat mites. It just is really unhappy. I might end up just repotting it all together. I do have some new growth here. It's like my only set of new leaves, but still like the plant overall is still like dropping leaves and is just unhappy. So I don't know. I'm definitely gonna spray it again you know, for flat mites, but I think I'm just going to eventually just repot it. These other Hoyas are doing well in here. That's where I keep my Oxalis. And these other two moss poles, I have my Neon Pothos, and then I put my Camposport Tuanum here, which I don't think it really likes the spot because it doesn't get enough light. And I definitely don't like the way that it's grown. It's just one vine for this huge pole that I just don't like. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that eventually. I put my Orbifolia out here. It is very angry since having flat mites. I don't know if I like it here or what, where I'll eventually put it, but for now, it's gonna stay there. My Syngonium Baltic is here, you can see. It's got lots of new leaves. I did, did I repot it? No, I need to repot it. That is on the to-do list. And my Rutusa, you know, the one that had the ants, like that was attracting the ants. So I moved that here. Let me see if my begonias have rooted because I don't know if these have rooted. I do have some like lots of new little leaves coming in. Mm, I do have a little bit of roots. It's probably gonna be hard to see. Yeah, some of these have roots. You can see right there. I don't know if you can make those roots out in there. Oh, I'm still losing some leaves. <laughs> so yeah, we will give this more time to root. So in my bedroom, the only really updates that I have is this is my like Maranta quarantine zone from Flat Mites. And they're just, they're not that happy. I'm continually getting yellow leaves. The only one that seems somewhat happy is this one. Like, look at all the new growth on that. Hopefully you can see, okay. And the variegated one is losing a ton of leaves. So we'll see, I'm like crossing my fingers that the flat mites are gone. Look at him, there he goes again. Just wanting to follow me everywhere. <laughs> and yeah, the rest of the plants in here, my bathroom, there's not really like any changes with those. Okay, in here, I just wanted to quickly update you on the plants in here. So I ended up chopping my Philodendron Mayoi and it's rooting in a cup of water. I had this one on like a tall trellis um, stake. So I completely chopped it up and I'm going to, I think I'm actually gonna plant that one outside. 
And this car is honestly, it's just a bunch of like random props. I ended up chopping my strawberry shake. And so this is the big top chunk and all the bottom leaves I'm rooting in water. I have several that I cut up. I have random reverted Florida beauties here. The big one is up top. I'm not gonna be keeping that one. My Syngonium elbows, the rest of them are rooting into moss. I don't know, I have a little bit of roots, but I don't think I have too much yet. And my Monstera Adansonii, I need to water this one actually. That is getting a little bit dry. It is rooting in moss. Yeah, just a bunch of random like props, Syngonium props that I've chopped, some Hoya, random cuttings and everything that I need to, you know, eventually pot, pot up. But I'm not keeping this like this. This is just temporary until I can. I just had to clear space up out of my plant room. So that is temporary. And all that is temporary. Again, I have to go through all of those in there. Since I did a recent video out here putting all these plants out here, I'm not gonna go like into too much detail on these. I don't really have too many updates, but I have my big micans here. Yeah, I don't think you guys are gonna be able to see that. I have my micans, heart leaf, and my hay eye all right there that I need to chop. The monsteras are all pushing new leaves. Like this one is a new leaf here. That's the bird of paradise that I just got that I have to find a spot for out here. And then my monsteras over here are pushing new leaves. We got two there and then this big one, I'm gonna have to like re kind of support and stake, but this huge leaf you guys, is pushing another one there. And my Celtipicana that I moved out here isn't really happy. Like the entire top growth has gotten really stretched out. Again, I had to move this one. I had to move all these plants in and outside like several times with the colder weather. I put them out here too soon. So I am gonna be chopping that pole up, I think. I just don't like the way that it's grown. Um, it's too tall, so, and I lost several bottom leaves from the transition, but for now, I'm just letting it do its thing out here. Sorry for the crazy, like, random rainstorm. That was just so random. You can hear it thundering still. Thank you guys for watching this crazy random plant update. Again, just sorry about all the weather and the crazy, like, light and darkness of this video. And yeah, stay tuned for lots more repotting on my channel and all sorts of plant care and plant chores because I have so much to do. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you guys later.